And then I also went to uh, Dave Chappelle was performing. Um, <laughs> Donnell Rollins called me, and I should have known it was fishy when he called. He reached out and was like, Envy, you in town, right? I'm like, yeah. He was like, if you have time, come to the show. I'm like, oh, you know what? I have a, I have a three-hour break, so I'm going to come to the show. I went to the show. He was like, I'll leave tickets. He was like, I can't leave it under uh, Booty Bandit, so I got to give him your government name. I gave him the government name. Went down there, and there was no tickets. He pranked you. And it was cold. And I'm like, uh, yeah, Rashawn Casey. They was like, sorry, there's no tickets. I said, hmm, DJ Envy. Oh, I'm sorry, there's no tickets. So I called Donnell. Sold out. Right? Donnell's, uh, uh, what does she do for marketing? Heather. What does she do? Is assistant? What is, she, what is Heather? She kind of runs everything. She runs the tour, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So she comes out and was like, uh, are you DJ Envy? I'm like, yes. Yeah. She was like, I'm sorry, the tickets are sold out. I'm like, it can't be sold out. Donnell invited me here. She was like, it's sold out. I'm sorry. We'll try to get you on the next uh, the next city. And we said, do you know who I am? I almost started the wild out. I almost started my, yeah, my, my blood pressure started rising. My face started getting red. Now everybody's there because everybody's looking and laughing. And I didn't think, I didn't find it funny because it's cold. And she was like, got you. I was on the phone with Donnell when y'all did that COVID prank. Got you. And then she, she has, when she laughed, she snorts. So she was like, <laughs> and it was just funny. But they got me. So shout to Donnell. Shout out to Dave Chappelle. They had a great show in Cleveland. Had a good time. Hey everybody, this is your boy Donnell Rawls, a.k.a. Uh, Donnell Rawlins. Don't forget that I do have a Netflix special coming out March the 17th. I'm excited about that. If you're in Baltimore, I will be at the Baltimore Factory Comedy Outlet Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of this week. That's uh, January 25th through the 27th or the 28th. Check your listing. I'll be at the Miami Improv and West Palm Beach Improv March the 4th through the 6th. A lot of people are saying, Donnell, I've noticed you had a lot of swag on your interviews, and we love your dick, right, dick writer's jacket. Well, some people have a hard, tar, hard, well, some people have a hard time. Well, some people have a hard, well, some people have a hard time. That's the worst thing you can do when somebody's trying to read. Some, some people have a hard times with their, sometimes people have hard times with their acronyms. It's not dick writer, it's the Donnell Rawlings jacket, and you can get yours. Tell them where they can get it from. You can get yours at the DonnellRawlings.com. No? <laughs> it's DonnellRawlings.com. That's Not right, the... DonnellRawlings.com. Get your official bomber DR jacket. I got DR in the back, and you can get a lot of goodies. Uh, I'm doing a cheesy voice because she is... Uh... And let me step in now, and because there will be other products available on the Donald... I keep saying the and on DonnellRawlings.com. So Guess what? We're auditioning for a co-host. And now, and now, welcome to the show. Hot, hot, hot. The Donnell Rawlings Show, live in your face. Fuck y'all bitch ass nigga, you never take my place, chicka. There's different forms of bullying, right? Mm -hmm. There's like physical bullying. Um, uh, there's like mental bullying. And then there's just like, just bullying, right? <laughs> right? Uh, they, all the probably the same thing. And I know it's a big thing now, right? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, oh, uh, internet bullying. Yep. Right? There's all type of bullying. There's, um, what's another bullying? If you had to guess of a different form of bullying, what would it be? I would just say sexuality bullying or... No, that's... Or, now you talk about police charges. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you just... <laughs> sexual bullying. <laughs> that sexual bullying? How... That sounds very rapey. <laughs> that's uh, sexual bullying. Okay, since you thought of it, what would be a, a definition of... Or, or a situation where someone was being... being <laughs> 
sexually bullying somebody. I don't know. That's the first thing that came to my head. What, the <laughs> sexual bullying? <laughs> the sexual bullying. Have you ever, do you think anybody's ever, like, tried to, I don't want to say take your pussy, but, like... <laughs> yes. But did somebody ever try to bully you? <laughs> Have you ever, now... Been bullied into sex? Yes. Yeah. How how did that happen? Where, it's kind of where people can, like, they tell, try to tell you why you're not doing it. Oh, you're not doing this because... The, but this, That's I reverse think psychology. Just, yes, yes. Because I've told I've I've told this chick one time. I said, <laughs> "Yo, I heard your head was trash." Exactly. That's and first, her first reaction was like, "What?" <laughs> right. And I swear to God, yo, I'm gonna tell you who it was. It, I'll tell you who it was. Fuck it. And I really went. I was just talking shit. I, no, I won't say the name. No, no, say it now. I can't say the name. Oh, uh, why? Are they famous? I can't say the name. And it was, we just joked like this, right? Okay, I'll say it. I won't say the name. Um, it rhymes with David Letterman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I was talking to what rhymes with David Letterman, right? I said, Jared, I heard, I, I heard your, 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 your head was trash. And she said, would you, right? And then she said, ah, she said, <laughs> she said, you tried to trick me. She was like, you tried to trick me and use reverse psychology. And this is a friend of mine, and we could talk, we just talk trash like that. But that would be an example of uh, sexually bullying somebody. Sure. All right. You know what bully, bullying I've experienced? There's a person that's associated with this podcast, right? Um, and in fact, I'll tell you, they are the ones that gave me the energy. There's certain people that inspired me to do a podcast. Bearded Humor inspired me, Joe okay. Rogan inspired me, and then some of the success of other podcasts have experienced. Have, uh, have a expired, um, inspired you. Inspired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I smoked before this, right? But then, through going through all that, there was a guy, right, that was like, man, I think you're one of the funniest guys out. Fuck it, let's do I want to produce your podcast. I'm going to do this fucking podcast. <laughs> you keep looking at him too, right? No, I'm not looking. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just saying, we're going to do this podcast. I got you. And then, I don't even worry about it. And me, I'm a type of person, like, I know when people want to help you, right? They always want to do it, uh, passion projects. But I've learned that it's always the best thing to do is to offer someone some type of financial compensation. Now, in some cases, you can't afford it, but at least the offering gives a gesture that I know your time is worth it, right? And me and this said producer, um, we talked about that. Oh, dude, I'm, I'm too, I got too much money as it is. That's what he said. Yes. <laughs> yo, yo, this is what they said. I have too much money as it is. Your 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 money's no good here. Do you see the look at these cameras? Do, do it look like I need money? They said all this shit. I was like, let's go. We're gonna do it. The numbers, you understand this podcast, is basically just starting all over. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We was doing it. We had some momentum. We stopped it. And anybody in the podcast world knows it's the consistency, consistency that matters most, right? So he was like, yeah, we're going to do it. And I'm like, yeah, it's going to take some time. Yeah, but I'm telling you, we're going to do it. Watch this, man. I'm telling you. Dude. You want me to be honest? Honestly? <laughs> Truthfully? Truthfully, honestly, figuratively, verbally, contextually, metaphorically. You can have a million-dollar podcast, and you know me. I'm like, ding, 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 ding. Right? Somewhere along that line, that person lost the interest in the podcast. That's what rich people do. Oh, especially rich Jewish people. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're like, I'm over it. <laughs> they could put their money in so many places. They start talking about their <laughs> fidelity brokerage accounts and shit. <laughs> the their house trader. in Florida. Yeah, the, the, the third house in Florida. Like, spend time in Aspen. You know what I'm saying? All that type of shit. Martha Venue is just like so just a normal walk in the park for these type people. And then in the middle of it, they was like, hey, and, and we had this conversation. It's gonna take a while to get the money, right? And this is what them those people do. They start, they like, they start looking at numbers and stuff, and then they do shit like just to say. <laughs> Whenever you see a Jewish person, you guys can try to cast me all you want. If they do this right here, <laughs> if they do this, I know the people that are uh, listening through all the other podcast platforms don't know what's going on, but just picture having a migraine and trying to... <laughs> trying rub to your work. skin off. Yeah, just trying to work. <laughs> you ever had a headache and you think if you rub that area long enough, it'll go away? That's what they do. And they said, yes, this isn't making any sense to me. 
And I'm like, I tried to explain to you. He said, no, dollars and cents. Right? This isn't making any sense in regard to money. And the person said, they just, I'll, I'll give you, I'll let you, I'll do whatever you, whatever you need to do to move forward, but I don't, I'm not going to be a part of it anymore. I'm way too good for this. And I think their voice was like this, I'm not going to be a part of it anymore. When they whisper. whisper. <laughs> when they whisper, I can't be a part of this anymore, Donna. It just makes no sense. I know what we started and the goals we had, but the forecast doesn't look too good for us. Us. Right? And I was like, okay. And with that said, you get past it. You over adapt, whatever is, Heather has a phrase, improvise, adapt, and something. It basically is something to keep you going, right? So you make moves or whatever. And then those people get together and they say, you know what? I really do believe in this podcast, right? And then they, mm -hmm. Olive Branch, mm -hmm. you know, but they say stuff like, uh, I mean, dude, if you ever need to use a studio, you know you're more than welcome. <laughs> After all that. It's a nice way to say I'm sorry. <laughs> It's a clever way to say, I'm sorry. But with that, you think that person would, you know, you see like, okay, maybe we had a bad day or whatever. And you feel like you see that person and they'd be happy to see you. You're engaged in the conversation. But what you wouldn't think of them to keep trying to roast you. Steadily. It's constantly. Now, where I'm from, like, you could come at me one time and it's like, oh, I didn't hear it. But if, like, this person had to three in a row and where I'm from, you called me a bitch-ass nigga. I mean, we, I know we're in a climate where you can't, a bitch-ass N-word. That's how I felt, right? And I feel like I'm being bullied by this person. How do you think I, or this just isn't for me, how should someone deal with a bully? And before you answer that question, I'm old school. We dealt with it like this. Don't come back home unless you, you better pick up a bottle or something and break it and go at them like, the way we, we had to stand up to the bully. But they don't do that anymore. How do people deal with bullies now? I think you're being very sensitive. Did However... I, that's, a, that's a mental bullying of me. <laughs> it wasn't about... That was very fucked up. But I also think that... But why... You know what? That's not fair. This is the fucking part. With women and men. Bitch-ass muffin, you ain't got no balls, no heart. And the minute you show a vulnerable side, you see what the fuck you just did to me? You said you're being very sensitive. Okay, go ahead. I'm not so fucking what, sensitive. So how you handle the bullies these days is you understand, because we realize that everybody has issues and they have problems. Boy, and does this guy have issues? Lord have mercy. So you try to be Whoa! empathetic to their, to their <coughs> issues and see why they are doing that to you. I think, you know, there's a part of um, jealousy that goes into a lot of bullying. Right. You know, the kid that didn't have a dad at home would beat up the kid that had the dad at home. Right. Like... Oh, showing off. Yeah. Showing off. So, I mean, there could be part of that. Um, Have you ever been bullied? I've been bullied. The Breakfast Club tried to bully me. The Breakfast Club has been fucking bullying me for years. And I don't want to beat a dead horse, but shout out to everybody up there but Charlemagne the Guard. They've been bullying me forever. And if you know the history of me, they always pull these fucking pranks. Oh, yes, the prank. They always pull these cornball-ass pranks, and they like little fucking kids when they get one off or closer. He, 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 we got them. He, he, he. They always do these goddamn pranks, right? And they're known for their punk-ass bullshit pranks. This past weekend, I had an opportunity to go to All-Star Weekend. Shout out to the 70, it was the 75-year anniversary where they, I think they uh, acknowledge and, uh, uh, um, showed love to what people consider the top 75 people living today. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how that was done because there were some people that was left off, people thought should have been there. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to be a part of that historical NBA All-Star Weekend. And I was lucky enough to do what I love to do, do stand-up. I did a show with Dave Chappelle, Mo Ammer, and my man Marshall Brand, And my man Marshall Brandon, right? DJ Envy, very, very popular. Um, very popular DJ done very well for himself as a DJ, as a business person, as a motherfucking fake-ass uh, real estate dude. They'd be charging $1,000 for seminars and shit. <clears throat> I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, but you know, no respect, no, no disrespect. You ever notice anything? No respect. <laughs> no disrespect and respect. <laughs> so I knew that he was doing a party with Lil Boozy. And I was like, yo, and I know DJ Envy is a very, very, he's a fan of uh, stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Him and his wife, Gia, I can say that of all of those. And Angela, yeah, of everybody up in the Breakfast Club, he always supports me on stand-up. He even produced a stand-up comedy night in New York, and I think he probably dabbled with the idea of trying to do it, mm-hmm. but a huge fan of stand-up, understands the craft and everything. So I was like, even though I don't fuck with the booty bandit, he was in town, let me invite him to the show. And the reason I want to invite him to the show, because I know he come to the show, boom, let me rip this shit up again, boom, he got to talk about it again, right? So it was an honest gesture for him to see what I do. So we leave in Ohio, and I was like, yeah, Envy's coming to the show. Then I said to myself, can I ever get these motherfuckers to prank? Then I said, oh, I got this motherfucker now, <laughs> right? Because, your DJ Envy is like, but he's, he's, he's famous. Usually it's like cut the line, go through the line or whatever. So I told the project coordinator, Heather, <laughs> um, I need you to help me <clears throat> pull off this prank. Because <clears throat> she coordinates the guest list and everything. Then I said, um, I'm going to, I'm going to get DJ Envy some tickets. And Envy's like, yo, he, I had him a plus one. And then he was like, yo, I got another person want to go. It's the um, uh, one of the uh, VPs of Pepsi Cola. I was like, you can stay. That nigga need to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw my Coke on the ground, right? I just threw my Coke on the ground. Get this goddamn cracker ass, racist ass shit out of here, right? <laughs> right? And then I was like, okay, I got you plus one. And then he come back, he said, oh, I got, I need one more, blah, blah, blah. And then he said, Spike Lee want to come, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Spike don't need no tickets. You probably don't need no tickets. He says, it's a perfect opportunity to do the prank. So I told him that Envy was going to come up to the window and act like this motherfucker ain't got no tickets. Right? And then I was like, Heather, I need you to help, right? And she like a fucking pit bull, right? She just ready to jump on it. She had already went ahead of the story. <laughs> And she already, she said, yeah. And she said, and then I'm going to tell him, what the fuck would you come up here for? <laughs> I was like, she was like. Improv genius. Yo, yes, and. <laughs> yeah. She went straight ham at him. Like, he was going to the principal. Oh, she said, yeah, then I'm going to be like. She said, yeah, then I'm going to be like, yo, why the fuck would you show up here if you don't fucking have no fucking tickets, right? I was like, I don't think that's a fucking good idea. I was like, he's going to be like, bitch, who are you, right? Which anybody would have said. And she was like, okay, okay. She calmed down, right? I said, just get it. Just film it or whatever, right? I said, whatever you don't give them the tickets. So I'm like, then I had to really suck him into it. I was like, I had to make him really feel like he was going to get VIP treatment. I said, yo, let me know when you walk in because I'm going to have somebody come and meet you. So I know he was on the phone like, yeah, he, he about to come meet us. We walking now, right? Yo, uh, he hit me. I'm on my way. Then he texted me, walking now, right? And I'm like, oh, is this shit going to work? Is she going to blow the other end? I'm waiting. I'm waiting for this shit to happen. Because Heather gets busy. I was like... She's some, Dave's gonna ask her to do something, and then she's gonna be like, because that's what she do. When Dave is sitting, she's like, she be like this, she be like, Donna, I gotta, you got, that's a great idea. She just jumps every day, snorts away, runs away, right? <laughs> Laps, right, yes, right, yes. right, right, <laughs> snorts and runs away, right? So I'm worried about her, and she already wanna be extra thespian, right? I just want anybody in the room right now, just remind me what, what I was talking about. Because I want to take this. I just, because some people like this, this nigga be losing his thoughts shit like this. Wait, what? What? Yo, you just shirt bullied me, son. <laughs> You just shirt bullied me. And I'm telling you, man, this is how we get caught up, son. I swear to God I was trying to keep a regular conversation, right? And this was not fair. Please remind me what I was talking about because I'm going on a rant right now. But that is so fucking unfair. And then this was unfair about it, the what? The what? Okay, I will say, I just would say, I would like to say, is this, I feel like R. Kelly, is this camera on me? What I want to do is today, I want to take this opportunity to tell you how much I pre- appreciate your artistic side, uh, the way you merge colors and blends, the contrasts and everything. And what I'd like to say right now, the color contrast that you have on right now is a very good choice. Thank you. It's a good choice. You did orange. a great job. Thank you. Orange is, orange is the new nasty black. or black. <laughs> All right. DJ Envy. Heather ran. She was on it. She got busy. 
Okay, wait, that shirt is banging. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. We was we we've inspired a shirt goddamn diva. But you it's know a very what good. It is. You have inspired good. a shirt diva. It's good. It's good. Yep. It's very good. Thank you. Yep. I, I just feel like this is the perfect. Hey, my eyes are up here. <laughs> I'm facing this way now. Yeah, you are. But okay, so back to this prank. Man, fuck that prank. So, how did you decide <laughs> on the color scheme today? Oh, I just I just wanted to, it was a different color. Yeah. You know, I like orange. I saw the top. No, everyone, so I, got it. Or I think orange is everyone's favorite color now. <laughs> I'm pretty, I think it's shaped. If you were a pink guy, you just went orange. All right, okay, getting back on track. Okay. Oh, man, such, so unfortunate. Some people are only listening to this video. <laughs> This is our podcast. It's so unfortunate some people only listen to this podcast. This is the reason why you have to subscribe on YouTube. This is the reason why. So I walked DJ Envy up to the gate, and then I was waiting. When the text is going, when is the text going to come? Then I get the text. They say ain't no tickets. I was like this. Yes, Heather. Got him. <laughs> I was like, got him. All I could think of all the pranks they did for me the past years, he said there are no tickets. And then I, I was like this. What? exclamation mark. Like, I got to get to the bottom of this, right? Fake I worried. said, what? That's no way. And then uh, I waited again. He was like, I know, but they say there's no tickets. I said, can you call me? Right? Put them on the phone. Right? Blah, blah, blah. Phone ring. Envy. Hey, how you doing? This is so-and-so. The ticket booth. Ticket's office. I was like, um, you know what the fuck we doing right now, right? She was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I said, is he getting mad? She was like... He not getting mad, but he's looking at his. He was looking at his phone a lot, right? Which means he was blowing me up on the phone, right? I said, "Well, just tell him that apologize for the misunderstanding, but this show is sold out, and we don't have any more tickets, right?" So, gives him the phone again, right? He texts me again. They say ain't no tickets. He texts me again, and then and then uh, then they're recording this all along, right? And I'm like, I'm imagining what he's going through, right? And it's fucking cold out. It's Cleveland, right? And then I've, when I looked at the video, Heather was talking to him, right? And you could see he was still had the envy going on. His leg was propped up, you know, like he taking a picture with the Breakfast Club and shit. But you could tell he was looking like, man, this motherfucker got me looking stupid as shit. <laughs> My man's is over here. Pepsi is over here. Then she was like, ah, this is for doing the COVID prank. I was on the phone with him. And he was like, you motherfucker. And it felt so fucking good to get a motherfucker with a prank, finally. Get him back. You ever been pranked? Uh, I don't remember the last time. I've, I don't want to start this, though, because then you're going to start trying to prank me or something. I'm not going to try to prank you. Okay. I haven't been pranked, really, other than, like, the typical kid stuff. No, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. Anything like that? Not that I remember. Yeah. See, this is what I understand. This is about, like, this is how you get in trouble. I think this is how you get in trouble. And it, it's, it's, like, two parts of it. As a guy, you see a woman distressed, very sexy. I think you get in trouble. What you can get in trouble with now is just the engagement. What gets a guy in trouble? You got a nice shirt like that, right? Mm -hmm. What gets a guy in trouble? Um, staring too hard. You can look, what, you know, and then minute. you can compliment. So there's rules. Well, you can look and compliment. Don't just don't make it all Weird. rapey. Ra What's rape? Weird? Yeah, weird and rapey. Like, you know, if you look too hard. <laughs> you know, when you look Wait too minute, hard. Wait a minute, I can't say this. Okay, I, I, not to say I've been on that side of it, but it, okay, let me see if I can do a rapey look. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What that, part that was it? Was the bottom, bottom lip? Is the bottom lip mm. bite. Like, mm. And looking down and not even at the eyes. But how can somebody not look down? You can look what? down and you, you take a mental picture and then look back up. But the goddamn go picture is still in the frame. <laughs> Put some blinds on it. Yo, that's like, that's like somebody being wide open. Like, woo, 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 woo. And they do this in Ohio. This Buckeye bitch is right here. Woo, woo. Wah! So you're telling me that I, I, there's a time frame in which I can look before it gets rapey. Absolutely. But the girls are still out. Yeah. The girls haven't been put away, but it's my job, it's my job as a man, a heterosexual, WAP-loving man, to continue to look you in your eyes. Absolutely. Positively. Right? You don't think it would be easier if the motherfuckers start looking rapey to 
Put your sweater back on? Um, I shouldn't have to change what I'm wearing to make you not a rapey looking looker. Oh, this is, looker. So, this is so fucking disrespectful and not fair. And this <laughs> What's was she another, wearing? This what was, did she have on? And this is another one. This, this is another thing that women, I hear women say. Like, they be like this, it's hot. Like, you know, I see them up with a shirt just cover this part. Like, why you got to, it's hot. So that little uh, piece of cloth is going to determine the temperature of your body. And if you, like, feel like, oh, my God, this is unbearable. Able to cool, yeah, able to cool off. And the only reason we need that little piece is because that's what society tells us. Yo, society is fucked up and you're fucked up. But you, if your society and you are fucked up <laughs> if you're telling me if society said, maybe I need to go to Europe. <laughs> yeah, where you could just walk around on the beach with the top off and... Yo, you haven't been to a top... Have, I would, haven't. Would you? Yeah, totally. You would? I, I couldn't go, because they would know I would be American. Because you'd be looking all rapey. How do you not, though? You'd be looking, <laughs> how do you not? Like, yo, what's up, yo, th what's up? What do you call it? What's up, 44 Double D? What up, 44 Double D? You're going to respond to it. But I think I, I, if you're in that environment enough, you're going to be like, oh, that's just another titty. You don't think? I don't. I think maybe I've been of this mindset for so long, I think that I'm always going to react to titties like they're titties. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's just another part of body. Fuck that. Not with yo, yeah, but you ain't got no areola in your fucking uh, elbows. Yep, some people do. You ever seen somebody with elbow, areola elbows? <laughs> hella dark. <laughs> they hella like, dark. Let me see mine. Yo, you got areola elbows. <laughs> All right, let's skip the subject because I know this is going to be a, a, a never ending thing. So, do you think that people are more creative when they're having sex or when they're not having sex? Or oh, you think you contribute? And the reason why I asked you that question, yeah, because I was talking to somebody the other day, and they told me about something. I didn't even, I thought they was playing with me. I didn't even know this was a word. Hold on. Yeah, because I'm confused. I'm like being creative, like creative with well, there's sex, this or term. creative when there's it comes to term. writing while you're having there's sex. There's this term. Um, it's called sexual transmutation. Trans Five ways to channel sexual energy. Sexual transmutation. Sexual energy trans transmutation. I guess it's when... What would that be? If you are having sex, you feel more creative, or you feel, uh, if you're creative, you feel more sexual, or when you're sexual, do you feel more creative? Do you, do you have? When you're talking about creativity, when you're talking about creativity, this, 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 is it about um, something outside of sex, or are you just getting this, more? This is relatable to the topic. We're talking about sexual transmutation. Sexual energy is creative potency, okay? Um, sex is the carnal root of man's generation, can be the source of his degeneration, yet holds the key to his regeneration. Um, we, or sorry, when properly harnessed, the primordial, um, I said that all wrong, the primordial powers of sex and its creative essences that initiate all earthly existence can be used to achieve anything you want. In the source, in, in, this, in the source of this vital power lie also the sources of wealth, health, and genius. What does that mean? So what is that? <laughs> I have no idea. So what does that mean that like um uh, when you're having good sex, you'll be at your most creative state? Or when you at your most creative state, will that make you have better sex? What What is your answer to that? I have no idea what this thing is talking about. I just know that it's talking about men and you. It's not talking about us women. Um, you don't have to always separate us. We are one being. <laughs> All right? But it's like, because talking about your um, pri primordial, was it primordial? Do you feel that, like, I know me. Because I just don't understand, like, what if, like, if it was what I think as the it is. Essence of all creation, sex is the center of all life, from the birth of a child. Oh God, I just missed it. Let me have to go back. Okay, where was I? All right, what's the question? Because I just feel like y'all aren't thinking about being creative outside of the sexual environment when you're having sex. As the essence of all creation, sex is the center of all life, from the birth of a child to this. Um, to the existence, what's that? Extus, uh, estatita, es, what's that? Extra, what's that where shit? Where we at? Where were you looking? That EC shit, this shit oh, all in the fucking room. Rise of the leader, 
the essence of all creation. I know how to say essence, motherfucker. Ecstatic. Yeah, there you go. I just, this week kicked in. The ecstatic conception of a piece of art, all creation is rooted through the libido. Is that libido? Libido, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I mean, okay, so that could make sense because sometimes you watch those old movies of those um, old white painters, like a Picasso. Oh, They're always the like having sex and they're naked and they get yes. and they paint. And then... Here's a definition right there. And me looking at that definition, I, I, I cold-heartedly concur. Sexual transmutation is the, al God, all these words. No, <laughs> alchemical practice of channeling and directing your sexual energy into a higher purpose. Okay, I'm letting that folk sink in. Um, as one of the most powerful energies in existence, our sexual energy can be directed towards achieving goals, manifesting dreams, and experiencing deeper states of consciousness. Yes, duh. That's what, like, that tantric stuff is all about. So and if I'm in a good mood with my jokes, whatever, it's going to make me smash better? I think it's the other way around. I if think I'm if you're smashing, smashing good, you're going you're gonna to come up with great new... Well, nutrients. I will say, I'm telling you, when I'm on, like, when, like, when I'm on a creative high and then somebody matches that energy, this, like, and I don't know, this is how, this is, I think this is the best way to have sex with somebody is when mentally y'all on the same page Nobody has to pull the person up. Nobody has to inspire. Nobody has to motivate. Even even though that's a good thing too, and that could create certain certain sexual energy. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody help you out. That's how motherfuckers become sugar daddies. Well, yeah, foreplay is starts way before you even enter the room. In a lot of the situation, it's the mind, it's the conversation. It's um, like you said, someone helping with Am some I, bills. Some. Oh, oh. <laughs> Boy, I get sexier and sexier every day. Yo, you know you old when you know how, the other way you can be sexy. You know you old. When you young, you talking about, yo, look at these abs, nigga. When you get old, you like, nigga, oh, man. What size are you? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, like, oh, this light bill. I'm going to tell you something. I've been that, I've been that person, two women before, and I've, and I've done that, and I never did it because of what I would get out of it, I did it because I could do it. Mm -hmm. And I know if I can alleviate some type of stress, I would rather you bust a nut, but sometimes it ain't enough. Mm -hmm. And it's so weird because I've heard people, yeah, man, he be tricking on so-and-so and he be doing this Stupid. and shit, you giving that bitch money. What's wrong with... If you have it, it ain't if, tricking if, if you got it. If you have it, and, and there's, here's a part of it. And... You, it's one thing to have it and the other end of it if it's appreciated. Absolutely. If it's appreciated. When it comes to a point where it's like it's expected, it gets fucked up or you try or to someone's play using me. you. Yeah, yeah I, like, I like to be heard. But I don't think there's anything wrong with doing something nice. Yeah, people. men like you are amazing. Like, they look at, like, how hard a woman's working and stuff like that. Right. And they want to help. And I'm telling you. The, instead I'm of take. You, and it's a really, you get some bomb pussy. When you're helping? When you help a bitch? <laughs> When you, I'm going to tell you. they're even more thankful. Let me tell you something. All right, I, I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you something. Yo, let me tell you. It's two things, listen, y'all, that you all you always, not that that's your motive, you will be able to get ass off. If you need stuff to get ass off of, is inspiration and motivation. Inspiration and motivation is probably two of the sexiest things that you could do for somebody. Mm -hmm. People, when you, like, when you really help somebody, you really believe in somebody, they look at you different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like they, 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 they really look at you like, oh, man, I never thought of that. I needed somebody to push me in that direction. It's so interesting that some people's motive at the end of that is something different, but I think that's... um. The dopiest, sexiest thing you can do is inspire and motivate somebody. Absolutely. People like to, I mean, most people, hopefully, like to learn every day. And if you're with someone that you can learn from, grow, someone that's helping you grow, yeah, that's priceless. Well, what happens? Now we get into relationships. What happens in a relationship when those traits and everything, can certain things get old? Can people get accustomed to it? Like if somebody is helping somebody, and I'm not saying that all women need help, but in a situation, somebody helping somebody, could it get like kind of 
oh, like, okay, I've been doing this for this long. And then the person feel like they just expect it. Yeah, you have to definitely, it can get old. And yeah, sometimes you have to pull the plug, you know. But what is that? Cut that bitch off? <laughs> Cut that bitch off. Yeah. Huh? If they're not appreciating it and they're not doing anything to better their lives with what you're giving them. Right. You know, instead of just living and going to brunch. What uh, motivates you? In life? Yeah. Well, my kids, one. And I've also just always been mot a motivated person even before the kids. I've always just, I'm just a go-getter. I like learning new things. I've tried every job ever imaginable. Um, Blow I'm job? I've tried those too, okay. shit. <laughs> I mean, I've done every Yo, job. Yo, she the realest bitch on the internet, damn, <laughs> man. Listen, I know it's a me too, three, fours, and fives right now, so I can't believe you said it. I know it's a real nigga said like this. I'm glad that nigga asked the real questions. Yo, beep, 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 the Donnie Arroyo <laughs> Show, <laughs> where we ask the real questions. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, so I've done all kinds of jobs. I've opened all kinds of businesses. Um, oh, God, I kind of, sorry, I just got sidetracked with something else I want to talk about. What motivates you? You started with your kids. Yeah, and that was, that's pretty much it. Like, it's so, it just and just learning and growing. That's what motivates me in life. I want to experience a lot. You, you know me, I'm always down for a good time. Like, nigga, you told me during the <laughs> pandemic, you was like, all right, I got this Jeep. I can get a camper on top of it. You are adventury as shit. Yeah. You know how I know you're adventury as shit? First off, I don't know how big those tires are on your truck, right? But I thought it was a dude truck, right? I a lot like, of people do. I was like, this, who this big, strong, tattooed nigga gonna come out of here, right? And it's you. I could jump out with my Louboutins. But this is like, this is where I know you're adventurous. This is where I know you're adventurous when you have an extra gas tank. <laughs> Yo, you got, what is that thing? How many gallons is that hole? Um, three and a half, that one. Um, but I want, because when you're going off-roading, you, the last thing you want is Black to be... Don't off, you do know that this is, this, this is your inner white girl. Because black people don't go off road with off road. You'd be surprised. Bills. There's some there's Niggas some Jeep don't do clubs. That. If you're listening to this, let him get his truck dirty. Let him get his truck dirty. Let him get his Toyota Tundra with two thousand payloads. I don't even know what payloads is. Let him motherfucker <laughs> get some dirt on his motherfucking forty two. People tank. do have their mall crawlers. That's what they're called. But then there's people. There's black Jeep crews that go off roading. Yeah. Across America. Yeah. I would do that. You when you join the crew and you start doing like going that like it's you go to a certain point you end up having lunch and stuff it, you'll you'd love it. And you you were we talking about the first thing you said was your kids motivate you, mm -hmm. right? And it's so interesting. Like before I had a kid, everybody always want not warned me, but they would say, "Hey man, it's gonna be your purpose to live." And I'm like, man, having a good time was my purpose to live, right? And because I, I never had anything really depend on me like that, that I would, had to give unconditional love. Like, I couldn't turn my back on it yeah. if I'm a straight, you know, a, a, a good guy. But, yo, I, now I understand when people say, well, my, my kids, my kids. Because it's almost like you get a reset, you know what I'm saying? Like, some of the things that you uh, feel like you didn't do, you could have your kid do. Yeah. Some of the opportunities that you didn't have you can give those opportunities to your kids. I think that's one of the dopest, dopest things about being a parent. Yep. The childhood that you wished you had, you can now give to your kid. And like then you, all, try to, yeah. you try to do too much. You try to do too much. And it's so interesting because I'm having not an issue with Austin, but as any dad, you know, you want your kids to be in sports. You want them to help, <laughs> that'll help them uh, build some toughness. I've seen him play basketball. Don't disrespect my son <laughs> like that. Don't baby. Get, yo, hey, I'm going to take hey, him look. out. I'm going to take hey, him look. out. Hey, look. Uh, hey, look. Hey, look. Don't disrespect my son like that. Okay, I'll say it. My son is the worst best player on the team. All right? And and this is the funny thing, right? Because uh, Austin is already tall. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm not saying like, okay, black people, if you think your kid going to be six, seven, six, eight, yeah, it's a book and a basketball. You know, but I wanted him to play basketball for uh, to hang out with his friends. Mm -hmm. He's the only child. And learning the team. Learning the, the yep. whole team thing, being on a team, being yep. supportive of a team, right? And he really enjoys soccer. 
All he talked about soccer, soccer. I was like, man, fuck that. Soccer is soft. That's how I used to think now, but I know soccer's the number one sport in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted him to do the basketball thing. Got him his jersey, got him the basketball. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh. he hates it. <laughs> he despises it. Oh, really? Oh, my well, God. Well, that's why he plays like that then. Don't disrespect. <laughs> he plays like that because he's six, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Yo, don't disrespect my son like that. I Yo, love that, don't disrespect. Yo, don't say that. He just need to learn how to dribble. That's all. Yo, that little dude. He's like, oh my god. Uh, and um, my good friend Samson is the coach, right? So I know Austin's gonna get in the game, right? He is like. So Daddy. you're friends with the coach. You're one of them parents. Yeah. He gets to play regardless. Oh yeah, I already knew that. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> Fuck that. You getting in the game, son? You might not start, but you getting in the game. Right? So, got him in basketball, got him in shorts, got him Jordan, everything, man. And um, he hates it. Then his first game, and I think this was kind of racist, because uh, the coach was telling everybody else, get the ball. Go get the ball, right? But then, when he came to my black side, he's like, Austin, steal it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Austin can't go get the ball? You know, all the other white kids just had to go get the ball, make an interception or something, right? With Austin, it was like, Austin, steal the ball. Hold on. Can we time out? What? You said interception for I know, basketball. I no wonder he... No, intercept the pass, okay? I didn't think that you was going to be so all on my shit like that. This is bullying. Another example of bullying. It wasn't good enough that I, I went through with it and I said it. I made a mistake. You had this, like, wait a minute. Did you say interception? Well, no I'm wonder. trying to figure out how he is the way he is in, in basketball. Well, he and... combined five sports in one thing. He was <laughs> playing rugby, soccer, everything. He got the ball after he stole the ball or allegedly stole the ball. He gets it. Now that I think about it, it did seem like he stole the ball because when he grabbed it, he did not touch it or he did not bounce it. He ran straight to the other end. And threw the ball up like that, right? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this kid is the worst. But then I was thinking to myself, Donnell, you weren't a gifted athlete, you know? Mm -hmm. I wasn't uh, great at any sport. I was competitive. But I, then I remember, I was like, I got to do like reverse psychology with him because out of um, sports, there's a lot of things you can get out of it. Everybody's not going to be a superstar. Everybody's not going to be a superstar. But the, the thing that's most important is are you a team? Mm -hmm. Can you be a team? Can you participate as a team? Can you help your team? Can you hurt your team? So with him not really wanting to play, I was like, but it's about teamwork. And then you get to hang out with your friend, Charlie. You guys get to play. It's unity and everything. And then this is what my son said. He said, Daddy, I don't understand why I have to do this if I'm not going to do it as a job when I get older. He's already thinking like that at six. Yo, I was like, wow. I want to say, because you're tall. And you're black. <laughs> and you're black. I didn't want to say that. I'm like, let me comb these curls your mother got you here. <laughs> you saw me, but you black too. He always talks like that when his hair is curly. But when I pick it out and get that afro, it's totally different. That's when he's still in the ball? Yeah. <laughs> then I was like this. I got to talk. I always talk to him like an adult. I said, um, that's a good point, Austin. I said, but... Um, it's for the experience. Then he said, Daddy, I get that same experience through soccer. So told you. now I got to tell him, could we just get the picture day? Like, yo, I paid for that suit. Let's just get the goddamn picture day. Right? And he wasn't. So I was out of town. His mom took him to the game. And the coach told me, my son is the only kid I know that start. He starts. The coach starts him, right? And then he takes himself out the game. Like by himself, he just like walks yes, out? Yes, like, like, yo. <laughs> coach said, he named everybody, blah, blah, blah. Austin, Austin heard that whistle and went straight to the bench. He went straight to the bench and did not have a problem being on the bench. Then I said to myself, maybe, you know what? Like I said, I wasn't good in sports. I just made a team. I was just happy to be a part of the team. Okay. I was like, maybe he's happy to be a part of the team. And then this is what he did. 
he went to the coach when I was out of town and, and whispered to him. I told the principal, snitch. I told the principal that my parents were forcing me. <laughs> I told the principal that my parents were forcing me to play basketball. So, you know, I first thing I heard was in the principal's office. <laughs> so it, he wasn't on my clock then. So, you know, when you get to yell at your baby mother over a principal joint and you don't hear about it, I said, <laughs> I immediately called Stephanie. I said, what is Austin doing in the principal office? And I don't know about it. If he's not in the principal office for a joke, then what the fuck is he doing in the principal office? She was like, what are you talking about? Did I call Coach back? He said, no, he was telling me the story. He kind of made the story up just to let everybody know. <laughs> yeah. my, my father, what black kid says, my parents are forcing me. That means me and Stephanie are like, shut up and dribble. <laughs> <laughs> We're not like that. I just wanted him to have the opportunity to experience being on a team, be, being, being on a team. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What loyalty is, what helping, what believing in somebody is. Yep. The, the being on a team. It's important in life. It's a great life skill. Team is, yep. team, you can, you can uh, do everything, just try to do everything yourself. Some people get a lot of success. They say they did it all by themselves. But life doesn't get better or easier until you find the right team, when you build the right team. But what about for you, you have commitment issues on teaming. What? <laughs> Remember when I asked you when we after the show, um, we were doing the tour of the improv, and I and I said, so now that I've done three shows, does that make you your co-host? You turn into like we were in a relationship. You you got miss eye contact, you know you're what? looking you know all over the place, and you choked on your drink, and you, you know said, what? You know what? I don't I don't like I don't like to to label things. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. I'm, I'm a, and, I, and I'll tell you why. Because when you label something, you commit to it. Same thing in relationship. Well, why do I got to call you my boyfriend? Because some people want those titles to feel entitled. You know what I'm saying? And as much as the energy is there with us, I like it. I got history with you and everything. I've had situations where I said, this is going to be this. Didn't it turn out and it, it made conflict. It was mis misunderstood. I don't want to commit to that. But I honestly believe that's not as important as... Um, Representing yourself, that's not important as doing a good job. You know what I'm saying? That's not important. I just, it's just hard for me. It was just like, I just got out of a relationship. No, I your, was, your I face. Was like, no, you choked yeah. a little bit. I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> the last two bitches quit on me. The last two bitches broke up with me back and forth. I said, I don't, I don't. I was like, I don't want to do that. Like, I feel the chemistry. I like it. You know what I'm saying? But at, at the time, or until this day, I'm like, I just don't like the title of it. You know what of I'm saying? Of anything, right? <laughs> I, yo, I am so fucking <laughs> nervous. Like, everything is like, uh-uh. This -uh. uh -uh. one trying to say, oh, I, I, I said I like you. I said I loved you. I mean, like, I Tano, like, what's, she, what's she getting into now? I don't know. I don't know. But guess <laughs> what? But guess what? We keep getting back together. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you a perfect example of that. When we were doing a Chappelle show, so many life lessons and everything I learned from that show. We were doing a Chappelle show. People thought I was a cast member. I was never a cast member. Nobody in that show was a cast member. The only cast on there was Dave and Neil. That was the only cast. Nobody was like, you audition and here's the new cast. It was just like, I fuck with him, I fuck with him. And you were only as good as your last shit. Yeah. If you made an impression, you stayed. If you didn't, it, didn't, it wasn't like you went away, but you wasn't on their mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I see the reality of it. I've seen the comments, people. I, you know, I don't read the comments, but I do. People like you. They like the way you look. They say you add something to the show, whatever the fuck that means, because I do this shit solo, nigga. But I get that part, but I didn't. I just didn't want to say, hey, in the new, because for me, the title doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. You know? Yeah. I don't. You think the title's important? It does. What does it mean? For for career-wise, too, it does mean something. To, to, and also... It's, it knows that you have something coming up next week, too, that, to prepare for, to do, you know. Uh, can't they be prepared just by tuning in every week? I mean, on radio, let me tell you, radio, when they get ready on radio, they don't say goodbye or nothing. You just, you just don't hear it. You know, I just, and, but isn't it like just an opportunity for people to see you, you know? You don't think Would that? Would you use that? I don't want to use I like to anything. build. I like to build and grow. I just I put my heart into things. 
I want to go out and find sponsors. I want to make it help make it Okay, ours. you can do that. <laughs> Yo, you can do you that now. Find you and that's find... a discussion. That's a discussion. <laughs> Look, everybody that's ever been on the team, that's, that is a discussion. And that have been this discussion. How do we make money off this yeah. shit? Do you have a relationship? And I don't have a problem with saying, I don't, I don't have a problem with... This is, a, this is very interesting. Because I like to work for shit. I like to have an understanding. But... I, I I really like I like what you just said. I like when people bring something to the table. Like, and I think maybe I'm afraid of the commitment of the title, not knowing what that title means, mm -hmm. or not knowing what that title can do. Maybe that's what my fear is. You know what I'm saying? Okay, bitch, you the co-host. What are you doing? You just you just saying you co-host, or are you doing the things to be co-host and to make right. this party move? Everybody on my team knows. You know, I have people that work for me during the pandemic when shit was tough. Like, I made sure everybody ate. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believer in, listen, I can't just, I don't like to just pay off of money I make. I like to, get, I like to pay off of money that we make. Mm -hmm. And by Absolutely. that, it's like, you got a relationship. Okay, you got this relationship right here. Donnell, you know, this is why I say calls. I got this people, this people right here. It's bringing money to everybody. Hit me off. We all be good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes I believe when you give people titles too quick, they 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 don't want to do when you give the wrong people. We that goes back that to our relationship yeah. co conversation. You know, if you're giving trick and trick and trick and they just take it, they get used to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And then like speaking about uh, teamwork <clears throat> and loyalty, and I've been hearing the word team on a lot of things. Uh, the winning team, the oh, yeah, um, your show, the the show that I'm gonna be a part of. Not my show, I'm gonna be a part of. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Austin's team. And then Dave Chappelle's home team. Mm -hmm. I and, can't wait. Yo, These if shows. you don't know, yeah. he announced last week that Dave, and, and I'm telling you, this is a motherfucker that's doing stuff after people was trying to come at him so hard, come at him so hard, um, try to cancel him. And then for his next announcement in regard to comedy, he's saying, I'm coming back, but with these motherfuckers. Yep. His it home feels team. so good. The home team. And if you've been under a rock, you don't know, Dave uh, is producing four um, Netflix specials called The Home Team, where he handpicked four people. And I'm pretty, I know his list probably could extend to so many other people, but the people that were connected to him the most that he felt good about wanting to do a special. I being one of them. Um, Earthquake. Earthquake being another one. Earthquakes drops January 28th. And on deck, uh, I'm pretty sure there has been some rumor of Lunell and Tony Woods. Love Lunell. Right? But it's so interesting because a lot of times people don't do that. A lot of times people get in a position, they just want to be all themselves. They just want to be the king forever. And they don't want to give a person an opportunity. And not to say anybody on this list, everybody on this list didn't need it. Everybody on this list, the home team, are people that were working road comics that supported themselves off of stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. Not one of those people are people that make a constant living acting. Not one of them. Mm -hmm. We all make our bread off of stand-up. And have been doing it for decades. And been doing it for decades. And it's interesting when those people are doing it for a while and they don't get the acknowledgement. Because yeah. we worked it for it. Mm -hmm. It's like even when the people wasn't looking at me to do specials, I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to body every stage I go to. I'm a body every city I go to, every year I go back, I'm just going to keep killing it until the powers that be catch on. If they don't catch on, I'm still eating. Yep. Tony Woods, 30 years. This... Lunell, 30 years. Earthquake, 30 years. Me, close to 30 years. And a lot of times people in position, they get jealous of them people. Oh, he going to blow up because they know what their skills are. So for Dave Chappelle, being my friend, being an executive producer, to make me a part of that. Sorry, the food's here. Okay, to... God damn, women just stop the conversation. <laughs> it's two things in the top conversation, titties and fucking food. All right? But so for him, are, you're not even paying attention to me now. <laughs> Yo, are you really? Yo, 
Are you really? Then get out of here and then go get the food. I'm go get the food. Go get the food. Yo, 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 go get the goddamn food. I'm gonna close. Alex, go get the food. the food. No, he's not. That's bully. Yo, he gonna bully you to grab the food. Go get the goddamn food. I'm here. Food. I'm here with you. All right, you. go get the goddamn food. I'm here food. with you. All right, in closing, I want to say for you to be what people consider the goat of stand up comedy, for someone to put themselves on a pedestal like nobody can touch me, for you to be at a point in your career where everybody's been critical, do I want to continue to bring happiness? to people? Do I want to continue to speak my truth? Do I want to fight for freedom, freedom of speech? Or do I want to go back to Africa? For you to say that in the wake of all that, say, you know what? There's four motherfuckers I like, and I'm going to do their special. And these people aren't typically the normal comics that you see that you're trying to water down, cancel culture is trying to ruin. These are comics that's going to say it like they say it, and don't give up. I'd like to say thank you to Netflix. I'd like to say thank you to Dave Chappelle. I'd like to say thank you to Tony Woods, to Earthquake, to Lunell. And thank you. And thank you, more importantly, for everybody that watches this podcast, for everybody that's ever paid a ticket to see any of those names perform when you didn't see them on TV, when you didn't see them in movies. I want to say thank you. Coming soon. Donnell Rollins, too soon. A joke can be too soon, but it never can be too soon for a funny observation. What? What? What?